Hey guys, today we are going to talk about one of the most common scams that happens in Target, Walmart, and Toys R Us. It's when someone buys a product like this Commander deck and they change the cards in it. They either put land, a land pack, or they put some commons, and they take out all the good cards, then they make a product return. The product is placed back on the shelf without much knowledge from the I guess employees would do it. I'm not sure if the distributor is involved at this point, but the employee then puts it on the shelf and voila. This happens to Pokemon cards, trading cards of all type, and it is probably the most common Magic the Gathering scam that we see at local big box stores. Pretty easy to do. You just buy it, take it home, or go to your car, open it, put new cards into it that are not good, return the product, get your refund, and repeat. Now, obviously, big box retailers have cameras, especially targeting the collectible cards items because they know that this happens quite a bit. However, you are still reliant, they're still very reliant on the customer service not accepting the return. And most times, you know, as Walmart, customer is king. This would not be able, you would not probably be able to do this at a local game store because the local game store is a little bit more knowledgeable about cards in general than a Walmart employee would be. So whenever you go to a Target or Walmart, it's interesting. I would love to see uh, screenshots on Twitter about it where you see odd cards and combinations. Here we have the Garouk, which is from the game. It's from the Garouk game. I think it was M14. It was also came with the giant Garouk stand, which I have in my home right now. I put it away because actually I got an Averson stand, so I upgraded. But it came with that game. So the game was very fun, and the Commander decks are very, very likely to be the products because they have more value. But today, and why this is important and why I'm making this updated video is because you have unstable packs and you have conspiracy packs before you had these foil shards of Alora packs. And now the most valuable thing in this Walmart isn't necessarily a commander deck because you can get one or two of them. It's the iconic Masters draft set and the 25th anniversary master set, which has been rumored, and I'm pretty sure this is true, will also be in big box sets. So I know a lot of people are hyped. They're uh, encouraged, I guess, by what's going to, the quote value there's not going to be much value i'm just going to call it right now anything that is in walmart has very little long-term value and people are telling you that it does it doesn't make any sense like any massly distributed product where it's in a warehouse and you don't actually know how many of these products are left i can tell you walmart still has the innistrad boxes that they're shredding and they're putting in these free packs because occasionally i see them and they're very good value. So if you can get an original Innistrad pack, I wouldn't open it. Just buy it and keep it because that's a part of Magic history, especially the Liliana the Veil pack, the one with her image. I think that one goes for a little bit more than the rest of them, and it would be a nice Magic collector's item. I would, I would love it. So why does this happen? Uh, it happens because people uh, get away with it a lot. Um, this is typical magic behavior um i'm not sure like if you've gone if you've gone to a local game store you know the penny pinching you know sometimes employees steal stuff sometimes family members steal stuff i remember um in the dna comics there's a video on and the video is of a mom and a dad and they're using their two daughters like who are five or six to steal clothing now you might say oh maybe they really need a clothing they might really need it's still kind of sucky for the store owner do you have to deal with that a loss of and that's why for the most part i don't want to open my store because there is loss of product and typically speaking it's just better to do online online yes you i'm going to show you an ebay scam a little later this week and yes you can get ripped off and yes bad things can happen but at the very least you don't have the you know, there's not going to be the violence that couldn't occur right I, I don't know. I, I don't know how violence would occur online. Uh, maybe abuse, uh, very angry words are said, but in real life, you can be robbed. There can be arguments. There can be, uh, I mean, everyone 
kind of just knows that you're physically going to be at this location from 9 to 8. It's a little scary, right? So this is the most common and most used uh, scam in Magic the Gathering. It is something that you have to be aware of. Many times they're not so obvious where they leave the front card. The front card, the oversized card, this person was probably particularly greedy because the oversized card's worth almost no money in these commander decks. They're just not. So the person even took the oversized card, which tells you that they're very casual. But I've seen this with booster packs where they slit, they slit the pack and it's very hard to notice, especially after you rip the pack, but then you don't have a rare. So it's just like, okay, huh. And then so they slit the side of the pack and with a exacto knife or something, and then they can just easily slip it back in. And unless you're very careful, this is what's going to happen. The danger here is most people. So I know a lot of you watching the video is like, oh, I would never fall for this scam. Yes, but your grandmother who wants to buy you a magic gift will. Your parents who want to buy you a magic gift will. They are the shopper at a local game store, I think is much more, uh, they can catch this a lot easier than a shopper at Walmart. The shopper at Walmart, let's take the typical shopper, maybe your wall, uh, your parents or your grandparents want to get you a birthday gift. They're not going to know that this card is not supposed to be in the commander deck because they've never played commander and they don't really care. They're not going to know that like a booster pack, this is a cut booster pack. They're gonna not going to know because I mean, seriously, like if a grandparent looked at this, would they think anything is wrong? They just want to buy their grandson a card. And this is why I am so critical of the monthly magic box and people who supported it in Pico Trade because the audience is different. The audience is not someone. So if I made a promotion about this casual monthly magic box product, which Tolarian said was casual, and I'm targeting casual players with this box, those casual players, many of them have no, they could be grandparents, they could be parents, they can be aunts and uncles. They don't even know how PayPal works. I mean, half of them are still on the auto pay system. Like, I'm not kidding you. I, I wish I was kidding you, but they've, in the last four years since this guy's been in jail, and, and obviously it's not been operating because he's in jail, they collected $22,000. Like, these are not expert level people who can tell, oh, Garouk shouldn't be in this commander deck. So while me and you think it's kind of funny and no one would ever fall for it, your parents are going to fall for it, your grandparents, your relatives, your uh, girlfriend, your boyfriend. They will fall for this hook, line, and sinker. And that's the true danger of why people do this and why people, I mean, it is something that you see at, if you go to 10 Walmarts, I guarantee you about five of them have something like this, have one product, maybe it's Pokemon, maybe it's Magic, where you look at the front card and it's not the right card and it's really obvious, or the packs are a little weird and you open the packs and there's no rares, but that's the casual player. So the casual player is very different from people who watch Magic on YouTube. The casual player is gonna be scammed, like all the time. And that's why you have to protect them because you might ask, why do we care about the casual player? Blank the casual player. No, they are the they are the bloodline of this game. Meaning that if you didn't have casual players, which I assume make 95 to 98% of our player base, like the player base barely goes to FNM. Sometimes they go to pre-release. They never go to GPs. GP Houston was 900 people in a city of the fourth largest city in the US. I think it's over 2 million people. 900. When I first got to here, uh, Houston, uh, in a suburb next to a waste station, we had 120 people at pre-release for RTR. Like, yeah, RTR was a really good time, but man, like, that's crazy, right? Like, in Houston has so many magic stores and so many... But I think Walmart is going to be the future model. I don't think game stores are going to carry magic as much because it's not profitable. You can always buy online cheaper. There's no reason. The game store has no advantage in price, and now it has no advantage in selection. So when you talk about any store, any store, it's price and selection for customers. The customer does not care. The customer can get it cheaper, and they can get it at Walmart. 
I like it. I think it's interesting to see the business model change. And now you have people like Rudy who sell boxes on mass and he can make money from there. But for the majority of your mom and pop stores, they have no ability to survive. I know because I've been in this, I've been in this space for a little bit of time and I've already been offered, hey, I'm from Arkansas, I wanna sell you this. I'm from California, I wanna sell you this. I'm willing to drive a truck to you with all my merchandise. And it's like, no, because you're trying to sell me Dragon Maze boxes and Born Journey to Nick's boxes for $90. Oh no, not $80. I can buy them from Dave and Adams with all my discounts for about 65 what, and get free stuff, by the way, and free shipping. So like, you know, it's super competitive. Uh, it's just not reasonable. And so Dragon Maze, I've seen for $50 a box recently. I'm like, wow. You know, I do love Dragon Maze. Dragon Maze is one of my favorite sets to draft. So that's, it's interesting at 50. I'm still not going to get the value, right? If the expected value of Dragon Maze box, I think it's like $25 now or something ridiculous. But I think it's nice to look at. Um, I, I like the gold. So you guys don't know this, but I collect baseball cards and football cards. And there's something called gold standard. And it's just like a gold bar. And I love it. I was like, wow, that's awesome. Uh, so I love product design. I am a UI UX graphic designer. And I appreciate when a box looks a certain way. I mean, Dragon Maze just looks like a gold brick to me. And that's appealing to me because I'm amazing. <laughs> we love gold bricks, right? Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.